not working. <laughs> so sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Right now it does. You type in your sponsor, your Rotary Club name, uh, simple name of the project, right? Um, you don't fill in the total, you only fill in blue areas, right? You don't fill in the total project budget and the district grant funds requested. That will automatically fill itself in. Put down someone who's going to be responsible for the project. It doesn't have to be the president. Usually it's the person who's in charge of the project and a phone number where they can be reached. Okay. And then just a proposed project description. So one of the things we do is holiday shoe boxes. And the location of the project is at Palolo Elementary School. And then this is really important. You, there has to be Rotarian involvement. You're not just giving money to somebody else to use to do something. So you can't make a donation to the American Red Cross or the Salvation Army or, or uh, Literacy uh, Project, uh, whatever their name is, I <laughs> see the girl. Anyway, uh, you have to actually have Rotarians involved in the project. So what we do is we collect the shoe boxes, we wrap them, we purchase the books, toys and games to go inside them. We stuff them and we present the shoe boxes at the school to the kids. The non-Rotarians that will benefit so that every child at Palolo Elementary School, which is all low-income students, will receive what for many will be their only gift at holiday time. And who will own the equipment? It cannot be the Rotary Club. It cannot be a Rotarian. This is so the school children of Palolo will order this. And then particularly this year, we want to make sure that people understand what we're doing and uh, that we are um, helping them to uh, know the good things that Rotary does. So this is where you put in what your budget is. So the games, toys, and books are gonna cost $1,700. And that number is what populates um, over onto the front page. And then I just made these numbers up, but that no match district, uh, designated funds is uh, what you get that you can just ask for. You don't have to match it, you can just spend it. So you can do only no match if you want to. And then um, the match DDF in our case is $700, which means we have to put in $700 of club cash so that the total for our project comes up to $1,700. Okay, then that's what goes on to our total budget place. And then the name of the person this can, uh, who's in charge of the project, again, has to sign it and take responsibility for it. And then the club president also has to sign it and take responsibility for it. So the this, club has to match? Sorry, is that what you're saying? The club, the has, club to has to match uh, a portion of the fund. So 20% okay. of what you get is no match and 30% uh, of that. 50% is matched. I'll, again, if you're going to be at the meeting tomorrow night, I will try to yeah. go into this in much greater detail for you. I think everybody else on this has been through there, has been okay. through it mostly, right? If not, I'm sorry, if there's anybody else who needs more detail on any of this, I'm kind of skimming the surface because I really want to just answer any questions you may have about um, anything you need to do to get your your district grant applications in by August the 7th. Hi, Laura. Hi. This is Conrad. Hi, Conrad. Hi, I have a question for you. So yes. is this uh, application a little bit different than last year? You mentioned that there was a section about publicizing uh, the project. Uh, it, is there any other areas that are new this year? This actually isn't new. This, okay. was, th this was actually there last year but okay. nobody paid much attention to it. <laughs> I so the, we're just, excuse me. <coughs> because of our emphasis and because of all of the people we're going to have coming in, we want to make sure that the word rotary and the good that we're doing in particularly our local community, but overseas as well, that we publicize it any way we can through social media, through your, your club website, 
if you have a way to get a story about, I uh, see, I've already got somebody else's, already got somebody else's got, the, has got the cough here, right? That's me. Is that Gemma? That's me, yeah. I'm hey, Gemma. <laughs> like this. So that uh, we want to take full advantage of this $200,000 that we have coming back into our district from the contributions that Rotarians in our district made three years ago. And that can, so, you know, have a big benefit to our community. Yes. Uh, Laura, this is Kelly. Do you, do you mind if we, if uh, from the original email from Naomi, there was the uh, spreadsheet that had the, um, the current uh, district funds allocations for 1920? Right. Um, do you mind just opening that up and we could, you know, just walk through one of the line. I mean, one of the lines for any one club is kind of an exemplar. Sure. If I can get it up here. Whoops. Sorry. Stop share. New share. Oh, it helps if you've actually opened it first. Sorry. Um, you're testing my skills, Kelly, I tell you. I I have it open. If I start, uh, oh okay, I'll tell you what. If I stop the uh, share, okay, okay, can you share it? Yeah, thank you. Okay. Uh, there should be a green share box for you. Yep. That's what I love about Zoom. <laughs> Okay, so I've got the go. spreadsheet right. up. Okay, all right. So shall we, okay, do you want to start with, do you, Alamoana, since it's right on the top line, or do you want sure, to Sure, sure, we can. <laughs> <laughs> the, the math will all work the same. But, the know, math we will can, all yeah. work the same, <laughs> right. All right. Okay. Uh, just our, our dollar amounts are a little lower in line two, but. Yeah, um, a little, little more what most people's are, but uh, hang on just one second, let me get rid of our people here so I can see the numbers. All right. So Ala Moana is getting or a total and the totals are based are, are based on a percentage of the total giving. A, a percentage is based on what the club gave versus the total giving for the district three years ago. Okay. And then what we do is we go through and that money comes back and we take an average of the last three years of club giving. That's all on the District 5000 website if you want to look at that really detailed one. But based on this, the total amount of DDF that Ala Moana would have coming to it for the year is $5,477. That's that total 50% of DDF for district grants and the $2,452 for global grants. Okay? okay. See that? Okay. Yep. And that number, that percentage is determined by a meeting of the foundation committee, which happens every January. And that's the district governor line and the uh, foundation chair and the grants chair and the global grants uh, coordinator. Okay. Those are the people that make up that committee. And we talk about what percentage we want to go to district grants. District governor, and we always allow the district governor elect the district governor for this year to have a little more say than anybody else. <laughs> Uh, but it's a democracy, kind of. Anyway, so Eric wanted to maximize the district grants again. So we have put the full 50%, which is the maximum amount that we can allocate to district grants. We have done that every year since this has started. Okay, and this year was no different. So the full $3,025 is, is the 50% of the district grants for Alamoana. Of that amount, 20% of that 50% is no match. That's so 
$1,210. If Alamoana didn't have any club funds to spend and didn't want to go out and raise any club funds to spend, they could just fill out that application form with no match DDF of $1,210, do a project for that dollar amount, and make that kind of an impact in the community. We kept that amount because we wanted clubs who sometimes we know get a little uh, cash strapped to be able to participate in the process. So that took the place of that district simplified grant that we used to have that was 20%. But now in addition to that, you get the additional 30%, which has to be matched by club funds. So for Alamoana, the no match is the 1210, the matched amount is 1815. So if they wanted to use all of that for one project, that project could be $4,840, which is the 1,815 matched plus the club match of $1,815 plus the no match of 1,210, which brings it to 4840. Okay. Does everybody understand that? Yep. Everybody got it? Yep. Yep. We're okay. 48. I don't tell you get 40. Do, do you add the 12 and the 18? No. Well, 36 plus the, 12. Yeah, you add the eight, you double the 1815 because you have to match it with club okay. cash. So you start okay, off with I got 30, you. I got you. 30 and then you add the 1210. Okay, okay. I got you. Yep. Okay. No, the doubling, the doubling math is great. <laughs> yeah, the doubling part is good, right? And, uh, you know, and you can do that all on one project if you've got a project like that. But you can also do, <laughs> I don't recommend it highly, but one year East Honolulu did six different projects with our money. But that means you have to do six applications and you have to do six final reports. So um, you probably don't want to do, go quite that crazy, right? But you can. Um, another year we used all of our funds and we did an international project where we built a water feature, a, a water uh, hydrant for a village, a little internal village in Thailand. Uh, because we were working with an NGO over there that we trusted um, and they got, got it done and we were able to complete it and get the report done and back before the May uh, deadline. So, you know, there, the nice thing about, uh, about district grants is there are very few restrictions. You can't build big buildings, but you couldn't do it for this kind of money anyway most of the time. You can build temporary structures. You can use your district designated funds <coughs> for something like shelter box. <coughs> Other questions on that? Is this so? This deadline is just for um, district grants, not for international grants, or is it the? So deadline? the first, the first three columns are just for district grants. Oh, I'm I'm referring to the August seventh deadline. Oh, the August seventh deadline is just for district grants. Yes, your decision on where to apply your global grant money is not until November first. Okay. Yeah, because the, they're still putting, the people who are going to come up with global grants are still putting them together. <laughs> and then Mark Harbison will put those up on the district website so that you can have a, an option to see the kind of grants that are coming out of our district. You don't have to use your money in our district, but we love it if you do. <laughs> Am I here correct? Deadline is Forever. now 7? I'm sorry. August 7th is now the new district uh, district grant deadline because okay. we were when we were on the assistant governor call the other the other day Eric was talking about the fact that he would have the list of what the foundations needed uh, in Bali and several people had mentioned that they wanted to use some of their district grant funds to help the Bali foundation projects. Um, um, and he said that list would not be available until August 1st, and that's the deadline that was originally set. So we just talked it over and decided we could extend it for a week, but we don't have a lot of extra time after that because, again, until we get all of these things in and tabulated mm -hmm. and put into a grant and submitted to our Rotary International and approved, 
we can't get the money back. And until we get the money back, we can't get it to the clubs and you can't spend it. Oh, that's great because none of our, neither our current or immediately past president are here. They're both in the <laughs> Well, it's going to work out great for you then. So <laughs> this going to work out great. We'd have some time to <laughs> get so, their signatures and right. so on. Yeah. yeah. Just to, just to be completely clear for everybody on the phone, Laura, then the global grant column, column four, right. or column five, I guess, the, the farthest to the right. The farthest right. right. That, that, yeah, that, um, like for our club, that $292, <laughs> that is over and above district grant and can be just something cabbaged on to kind of an a la carte uh, expense, you know, for Bali or added to a, an otherwise district no, global no, grant. Not for Bali, no. Um, but the Bali Global Grant is done. We did the Bali Global Grant for the for the um, blood bank. We did it okay. last year so that it would be done by this year. <laughs> so okay. the only thing available for Bali are if you wanted to use some district grant funds for small projects there. Uh, a couple of hundred dollars for buying uh, something that um, that the the school needs, uh, you know. Right, but that but but that wouldn't be part of the global grant. No, so the global grant is like uh, uh, <clears throat> I'm trying to think of one, but uh, okay. Uh, right now, uh, there's usually like a Thailand dialysis machine project. Right. It's always looking for money. Our Rich Zegar did the Romanian uh, vocational training team last year. Um, uh, James Ham, they're working on a. a Beautiful project in Nepal. <coughs> Remote uh, school after earthquake relief. So this two hundred and ninety-two dollars that you have, the thing about global grants, it has to be matched. So your club all has to come up with the entire match. all global grants have to be matched. So the two hundred and ninety-two dollars has to come up with two hundred and ninety-two dollars from your club. Or you can put a hundred dollars into somebody's global grant and match it with a hundred dollars from your club. Okay. You don't have to use the whole thing. Uh, if you don't use it by November first, it will go back into the general pot, and trust me, someone else will use it. Someone will use it. <laughs> someone will use it. It will get used. So, uh, excuse me, Laura. This is Conrad again. So, <laughs> from what I'm from what I'm understanding, then because of the timing, if we wanted to use district grants <laughs> to put towards um, the International Service Project, Bali, uh, it has to be done using the district grant because the global grant is due in November and that pro the International Service Project would have already happened, right? right. Okay. So, so when the committee got together last year and we were talking about uh, what we were going to do and <clears throat> talking about his Bali project. And Wynn had done that the same thing the year before when he was working on his North Shore project uh, with the, the trafficking uh, yes. project, which unfortunately got delayed, not because of rotary, but because of their building. So um, in, these things take a while to happen. So Wynn's money came out of the year before and Eric's money came out of Wynn's year. Um, and again, we used to have some rollover extra grant money <laughs> just because we didn't use all the money. Hard to believe, but we didn't use all the money in prior uh, a lot of times because it wasn't available for district grants. It was only available for global grants except for the first 20%. So. This is a beautiful change in that we've got a lot more money to use under the club's control and simply and within our communities so that we can spend uh, half of the money real fast and real easily. And then we have more people who are comfortable with putting together $30,000 global grants. And uh, we're encouraging more and more people to do that. We had two, two brand new, uh, people who had never done a global grant before who put one put them in and got them approved and they were the first ones through the system last year so uh, don't be afraid of starting a global grant if you have a passion and you have a project uh, but talk with uh, Mark Harbison or members of the international service team James Ham, Murray Visser and they will walk you through to make sure that you're meeting all the criteria for a global grant. 
I'm sorry. I have another. I have another question. So, if it, uh, is there any chance that the the district um, grant funds won't come back in time? Uh, I guess the concern was uh, because the international service project is in early October, and the funds don't uh, uh, the district uh, funds are not uh, given back to us until September. Could well, there be possibility that there's a delay in getting those funds and then therefore <laughs> well, it, 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 I'll tell you what, Conrad, it's entirely up to you guys. Okay. All okay. right. So yeah. if you, if all of you, if every single club gets their district grant application in to Kelly Myers before August the 7th, so that we don't have to go out and chase clubs for them, mm -hmm. uh, then we take half an hour or an hour and we make sure that well, we a little longer than that, but we, we go through and make sure that they all fall, that they all meet the criteria and we put them together into one uh, grant. So this becomes a district consolidated grant that the district is responsible for. That's submitted to Rotary International. They review what the clubs are asking for. Some, they usually come back with a couple of questions, like for Ryla, they ask us, you know, how far are we taking the kids and is everybody qualified to work with kids and that kind of thing. Um, but, you know, whatever it is, they'll ask us a couple of questions and then they'll hopefully approve it and then the money is wire transferred. The good news is that in prior years, uh, there was frequently a delay because the final report for the year before uh, sometimes got delayed until the middle of August. <laughs> uh, this year, uh, it, it was it was submitted in June, and approved and written off. So there is no everything is clear for all we have to do is get the new grant in to RI and um, and get it approved. So if we get everybody getting getting their money in by August, getting their applications in by August the seventh, and we don't have to chase them then we can get that in by August the 10th. And that gives Rotary International a couple of weeks to, to make that decision. And then when they wire transfer the money back, we get those, we write the checks and they're physically a check that gets written to the club. And we tell your assistant governor how much money you have to have in your district grant account. And I know you each all have your grant accounts already set up. Uh, <coughs> so uh, once you've got your matching money in your district grant account and uh, your assistant governor can hand you the check and then you can do your, your thing. What a Eric is anticipating for the Brawley project is that you will carry cash to Bali and buy the, what you're going to buy for the foundations in Bali. Laura's Janice. Yes. A couple of uh, questions. So the global grant money, can that be done later separately? Because like our club had committed to Mark for an India uh, blind project that we would um, donate. Mm -hmm. So can that be used later? Because he hasn't asked for the funds yet. They're still trying to get the global grant. <laughs> Oh, yeah. That, that, that's the other thing that happens, right, is that um, this, this global grant column, that you can see my hands, I'm sorry, this global <laughs> grant column that you're looking at here is for a commitment for global grants that are going to be started this year. There are a lot of global grants that were started last year that still have to be approved by Rotary International that then once they're approved, you will have people like Mark or James or uh, Eberhard uh, coming back and saying, okay, I think Rich uh, Zeger has just about got everybody on his grant uh, finalized. They'll come back and say, okay, you committed your global grant money in 2018-19 to this project, send the check to Rotary International. So we tried to tell every treasurer last year, every international service person, please make sure that your club has got those funds set aside because they will be asked for in the future. Okay. But this, this, 
money for this year. So Diamond Head's two hundred and ninety-two dollars, depending on which which grant they go in with. Probably they won't be asked for it until the earliest would be May of 2020, and it'll probably be more like September, October, November of 2021. Of 2020, I'm sorry. So there's so, a lag in global grants. Okay. Oh, okay. So, so at this point, like we didn't, we said we'd commit. So it's just going to come out of our funds. There's no. There's nothing else for us to do other than to write him a check for 500. We don't. When he, when he asks you for the check for 500, you send a check to the Rotary Foundation with the global grant number on the check okay. and on the uh, grant form that, and on the contribution form that you send in with the global grant number on that as okay. well. But there's no yeah. getting the, getting money from this global grant column no. here. To Not this year. This it. is for next year, whatever so, starts in next year. So we would have had to have done it last year. I don't know exactly when he applied for. Yeah, his that one has not been approved yet. Uh, they're still they're still working on some uh, sustainability issues, I believe. Okay, all right. So then, on my district grant, then so mm -hmm. we don't have to use all this. Um, money, I gather. And so when, if we're not using it all, is there a protocol? Do we use the matched funds first and then a portion of the no match funds when we're filling out for what we need? Or well, it's up to you, but I'd use all the no match first. Okay. Yeah. You don't have to do anything just to get those. Okay. Right. All right. Yeah. All right. So I mean, the district's going to give you the the one hundred and forty four dollars for Diamond Head, right? And then if if out of the two sixteen, if Diamond Head can only come up with a hundred dollars of club cash to match, then they can use a hundred dollars of the match uh, funds, and they can do a three hundred dollar project. Okay. All right. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I just didn't. Yeah. I was just trying and to. Make then sure that, and then that. And then and then again, not to worry because. That extra hundred sixteen dollars of matched funds will go into a round two, where we we can put in some contingency into our application, and so we'll put out a <coughs> request for a round two. So Laura, that, we'll have Laura, another project. Laura, that was my question. What's the timeline for round two? We don't know yet. August seventh is the deadline for round one. <laughs> And we want to get that out and we want to get that into Rotary International and we will we'll pull the maximum amount that we can. And then we will look and see how much we have that is not committed by clubs and then we will submit. And then the other thing that we get every year is remember when on that slide where it showed the endowment funds and it showed earnings from the endowment funds going up as into part of that share box. Um, so people who have, have made a bequest society um, or who have made a, a contribution to the, the permanent fund of Rotary International, the earnings off of that, <coughs> if they've marked share, can come back to the district. Okay. So that once we actually get our check from Rotary International, it's always more than what these numbers add up to because these are the numbers we know about. They don't know what those earnings are yet, so they will send that to us as well. So we add that to the round two and then that goes out uh, to bid. And we usually say, give people like three or four days, okay, send in your applications and, and uh, we'll fill as many as we can. So does this accumulate at all if we don't use all this this year or not? Or not? It just gets used for round two and it's it. Gets used for round two if we ever, if we ever don't use. Okay, so I'm going to use Alamoana as the example because the dollars are a little more significant. Okay, so if, if it came up in, in the $3,000 that they have for district designated funds, if something happened in their project, just didn't make and they didn't tell anybody it wasn't going to make and all of a sudden June 30th shows up and they haven't spent their money we have to send it back to Rotary International and when we send it back to Rotary International that then rolls into global grants for the next year 
So if you're anything that's going to happen to your project that you're not going to be able to use it, you can switch your money to a different project. If it's a part that's already approved, it's real simple. If it's something that's, you know, again, falls within the criteria, you just have to send it over to Kelly and Mark and me, and we look at it and we make sure that it's going to be okay. We get approval from Rotary International. They change our, our district grant, big one, and uh, you can do a different project with your money or series of projects. I have a question a about eligible projects. Yeah. Uh-huh. If if I have a if we were slated to do earlier a service project that was also going to come with some funds and the, the the kind of the project fell through would we be able to do that with the district grant where we're going out we're doing some sort of uh, you know improvement project something like that and then also giving a check to the recipients well you can do a you can do an improvement project and that improvement pro so uh, we're talking landscaping at Kahawiki Village. Let me use that sure. as an example. Going to do landscaping at Kahawiki Village, um, but your club also wants to give them a thousand dollar donation to use however they want to, uh, to, to IHS to use for whatever they want to, right? So the right dollars for the landscaping which is basically buying the plants and the pavers and whatever you need <coughs> not the labor obviously but just the pa plants and the pa pavers so if you came up with like a thousand dollars worth of supplies to do the landscaping that could come out of your district grant the thousand dollars that you're just donating to IHS cannot okay I had another question about um, eligible projects as well. I'm kind of working on organizing a student project through UH Manoa with potential um, partnerships in the community, especially on Paco Alco and like, the area. And I'm wondering what your guys' um, rules are, regulations are on, on doing things through university systems. Uh, are you talking about like a scholarship if, for if a student? Is, I'm sorry, I didn't hear the first part. I, I am a student, actually. Oh, no worries, because I, I saw something about scholarships. You guys do some kind of scholarship. Yeah, option. well, yeah, there are lots of scholarships in Rotary, and the district grant can be used for a scholarship for a student at any level. So oh. if you want to help a student go to a, a class at the university, fine. If you want to help a student go through a vocational training program, fine. If you want to help a student in high school uh, set up a uh, set up a, a vocational project, fine. Um, if you want to go to an elementary school and set up uh, a, something for the for a student to uh, be able to go outside the school uh, on a field trip, fine. So you guys don't have any rules like as far as who the beneficiaries need to be of um, district grant projects? Nope, that's your decision, club decision. You cannot give the money to the University of Hawaii. You have to give it to the student or to the program that the student is outside the University of Hawaii program. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I know uh, uh, another thing that a lot of clubs do is uh, the Hawaii Rotary Youth Foundation scholarship. So each club, I don't know about the eco club yet, sorry, but each club gets a $5,000 scholarship from the, from the HR, from the Hawaii Rotary Youth Foundation, which is separate from Rotary. Um, and um, a lot of times you're doing the interviews and there's like three kids that are fantastic. So you submit one to move forward for the $5,000 scholarship, but then the other two, you'll come up and give them a $1,000 scholarship through the club, or you'll give them a $500 scholarship through the club. That's another good use for your district as uh, your, your uh, okay. district. Club. Clubs on Maui use them for, and I guess we have here too, clubs use them to pay for scholars. <laughs> Ships for the kids that are going to Rotor to Rila, to the Rotary Leadership uh, ro uh, Camp. Okay. Lots of flexibility in district grants. That's why we like them. Yeah. Amazing. Hi, Laura. I have a question. So um, recently, I'm Aries. So I moved from Community Service Chair. Hi. 
to now the youth and next gen. But cool. so I guess a lot of the community service that we're going to, I mean, a lot of the youth and next gen kind of project that we're having at the four different schools in Kalihi that I will be involving community service. And so my question is, should I be working with the community service chair, like the different projects that we want to do at those different schools and write a, a grant? Uh, or should he, um, the community service chair, the new community service chair, write the grant for me? It Brad. doesn't matter. That's entirely up to you and your okay. club. We, uh, our club always gets together with a board meeting and decides what we want to do with the funds. Um, and okay, every, everybody's around the table, right? So the one, right. Consensus, the one consensus out of our board meeting this year was that we would use everything for one project instead of six. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, okay. They, they, did one grant. To, they did not want to write all of those, all of those uh, final reports again. Different grants. Right. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a good way to look at it. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I had another question. Um, is Kaka'ako considered its own district or is that lumped in with another one? Because I didn't see Kaka'ako listed in the, uh, in the clubs on this panel. That is you're, you're not on this spreadsheet because this spreadsheet was created before you were. <laughs> but but when who is of course always looking out for you he says so is he sent me an email a couple of days ago and said is eco cub going to be able to get uh, get district grant money if, or get get grant funds and what we normally do is um the, the, so the new clubs like eva beach uh, the e club well e club of district 5000 but clubs that don't necessarily have three years of history or clubs that have been struggling a little bit to get settled, uh, we start them off with $300. And of that, so $60 is no match DDF. Your, yours will look just like Eva, uh, the E-Club of District 5000 in Eva Beach. It's $60 okay. of no match DDF that you just have to ask for and you can spend. $90 you have to match, so it's 180 So you can do a project for $240. Okay. You can do one a lot bigger than that, but you'll get two hundred and forty dollars of district. Uh, okay. District. And and as far as partnerships, like between districts, mm -hmm. is that very or between clubs? Yeah. Or between, yeah, between clubs. Yeah. Uh, is that is that difficult to coordinate, or is no, it a normal not, thing? Not usually. Um, I think Scott Wishart is your assistant governor. Is that right? The yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe he is. So. Um, and I apologize that I don't know who your president is. That's embarrassing. No way. But anyway, uh, um, it, he has president's meetings. And so the presidents get together. And one of the things they do sometimes at those meetings is they say, one of them will say, you know, I've got a really great project, but I could use some more money for it. And other clubs will go, oh, I'd like to contribute to that. And so they come together and they say, okay, we'd like to all go together and spend all of our district grant money on this one project in Kakao. And Laura? Yes. We're, we're having that meeting on Wednesday. Oh, okay. All right. Perfect. Cool. Yep. yep. Awesome. So, any other questions? Well, I do really thank you all for, uh, for joining in. And again, don't ever hesitate if you do have any questions to, to send me an email. It's laura at highmed.cc or send me a text at area code 808-221-0126. That's all up on the District 5000 website. So Mark Harbison has done a great job and Naomi has done a great job. I think everything has been updated except for the new August 7th deadline. And I will send that out again to everybody uh, so that you have it to, to, to look at. But um, try to get it in earlier. The more we can get, the more we can get in and put into the form for Rotary International without waiting till the last minute, the better we'll all be. Okay. Laura, one more question. Yes. Not exactly related, but um, for the um, dictionary project. Yes. Who was the person supposed to email besides the dictionary project company? Was that still Arlene? <laughs> I, 
I don't know. <laughs> okay. Well, I emailed it to I think her. That's, I think that's one of the people that uh, Eric is about to send out a, a request for people who would like to join the district team. Uh, okay. One of the positions that he's looking for. So, you know, anybody who'd like to come play with us, the more the merrier. We need all the help we can get. <laughs> thank you Hi. so much, Laura. Okay, Laura, thank you. One more question before sure. maybe people can sign up. I'm sorry. Oh, that's fine. Hi. As you know, I'm part of the E, e Club. Yeah. So I'm calling from California. Oh, great. <laughs> and um, I'm new at this. I, I, uh, we have several members uh, in Asia and they don't have a local Rotary Club. So how do we match those funds that we use for those international service projects when it's our club? It's our club doing an international project with our club. Um, it's a short term, small project, right? Something that can be done within a year? Yes. Okay, because uh, that's the first critical part. Mm -hmm. uh, you do not have to, for a district grant project, mm -hmm. You don't have to have a Rotary Club on the other side. Okay. But you, I have to warn you, you do have to have somebody you trust who's reliable, who will get it done. And then the other thing to work, uh, to, to, to watch out for, and we found this the hard way when we did ours, right? Mm -hmm. For global grants, Rotary International absorbs the change in currency. Mm. For district grants, there is no nothing like that. So when you put your project in that you're going to spend a hundred dollars U.S. and then you go to uh, where are you looking at for a project? Okay, so you're, you're going to go Myanmar. Okay, so you're going to go do something in Myanmar, right? And you, it, yeah, pick some place. I have no clue what the currency is, but that's fine. You buy it in their I, local we're currency. On Tokyo, so maybe just yeah. Yeah. So you, you buy it in their local currency, right? Whatever you're purchasing there, because you try to purchase things there. Mm -hmm. And you have to get receipts. I'm sorry, I didn't mention that to everybody. Make sure that whatever mm -hmm. you're doing for your district grant project, you must have a receipt that has to be submitted with your final report. And that receipt has to be at least as much as or more than the amount of money that you ask for for your district grant funds. Okay. Okay. And that includes, in your case, the, the, the transfer from one currency to the other. Uh, when we did the project in Thailand, right? So s say it was a thousand dollars, and we um, tr they changed the money to bot, and we bought everything in bot, and then when we translated it back to dollars, we'd only spent nine hundred and eighty dollars, and we can't spend less than what the a grant is, because otherwise you got to send it back. You don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. So we called up RI, and they said that we could put a cover over the over the fire hydrant. And then we spend our other, our, the rest of the money. So, you know, a lot of flexibility, communicate, don't be afraid to ask if there's any questions that are coming up on your project. On the international projects, so though, I've got to tell you, make sure you're working with somebody who's reliable, who will give you um, invoices and who will get it done, I would say for international by May 1st, so that you got plenty of time to get back here and get your report in and get everything done. What are receipts due for the fall? The receipts, uh, the, the way it's written is that you're supposed to submit your final report two months after your project is completed, okay. or at the latest, May the, <laughs> Okay, I'm looking for one of my team to jump in. It's either May 15th or May 31st. It's on the district website. Sorry. May 15th. Yeah, thank May you. 15th. May 15th. Thank you. <laughs> and that's <laughs> district projects. Mm -hmm. That's for your district project. Okay. Awesome. Thank you, Laura. Fantastic. Thank, thank you all Laura. very much. Nice seeing you. And I will see Eco Club tomorrow night. Okay. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Laura. Laura. Feel better soon. Thank you. <laughs> I'm doing this on my bed myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you sounds like it. Thanks. That's terrible. <laughs>
do this. Switch camera. <laughs> Kelly had control of the screen, so I couldn't leave. Sorry. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, I had forgotten that part. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Kelly, for sharing that. Your meeting should start in a few seconds. All right. Switch to gallery view, that would be better. Mute. Stop video. 